Okay, let me start it. So, um, hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you to uh, the Connect Open Art Studies Third webinar. And uh, today, uh, with uh, the title Digital Asian Artwork, presenting Mrs. Septalina Kovarova Kostadinova and Mrs. Tiriana Stasova. And uh, first and foremost, to provide you with some uh, general information about uh, the project, how to connect. Uh, Hulk Connect is engaging cultural, artistic, and research organizations to stimulate European awareness and empower people of uh, current and future generations to respect the inclusion and the diversity and to be successful in operators in their local environment. The aim of uh, the project Hulk Connect is to support artists from social inclusion groups to present and promote their artworks in post-COVID-19 circumstances and to inspire their cooperation within the European countries. Now, uh, the aims of uh, today's uh, session uh, offer the participants to increase uh, their knowledge on the topic of digitalization uh, artworks and increase their ability to reach new clients and professional networks. Uh, this will be achieved by the division of today's session into four lessons. The first lesson will answer the question why to go digital. The second lesson it will present you how to photograph and scan artworks. The third lesson how to video record artworks um, with a respective exercise on this topic. And the fourth lesson how to audio record artworks. Now I would like to present you some general rules for today's and all sessions. First and foremost to, to the project requirements and of course in accordance with the GDPR we inform you that the current all trainings uh, should be recorded. Therefore, if you don't wish to be recorded, you might as well uh, turn off your cameras. And that also applies to some screenshots that will be taken later during the webinar for promotional purposes. Again, if you don't want to be uh, shown, depicted in, these, uh, in the recording and the screenshots, you can turn off your cameras. Moreover, uh, an, an attendance list will be shared with you shortly now in the chat. And uh, I would like you to uh, sign it, fill it in, uh, all participants, because it is necessary again for the project's requirements. And um, also, uh, an evaluation form will be shared by the end of uh, the training to be filled digitally, again, because of the project's requirements. So this is the attendant list I will now share with you in uh, the chat. So I just pasted the link to the attendance list. So please take a few moments to fill it out. And this will be the evaluation form I will share with you by the end of the session. Now, some general rules of communication. In case of questions, Please first raise your hand and then when you're given permission by the presenters, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Therefore, your microphone should be moving to you in the whole session unless you're asking questions. The meeting is recorded during the implementation and I guess you can already see the automatic message appearing on your screen. Uh, we are going to ask you to open your cameras uh, when we're taking photos, uh, if you wish to appear in the photos. And uh, please write your name and send an organization in the attendance at uh, least appear, appear correctly. Lastly, before giving the floor to, the, to today's presenters and trainers, uh, this is an, just an indicative agenda of today's session. You know, we're already in the registration section and the welcoming and introduction to the training. Now we'll follow uh, um, what the section, the lessons of why we go digital and how to photograph and scan artworks. Then we we'll have a short break, five minutes, and then uh, the last lessons, two lessons will follow: how to video record artworks and how to audio record artworks. An exercise in artworks video recording will also uh, follow, and then we'll close uh, the meetings. And I will share with you uh, the evaluation form. Uh, to be filled in. So, without further ado, 
I'd like to thank you for participating in today's session, and I would like to give the floor to our uh, today's stress trainers, Mrs. Sevda and Diliana. Welcome. Hello, thank you, Yorgos, for uh, the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes. Thank you. So my name is Sevda, and me and my colleague Diliana will uh, present uh, today's lessons. Um, in the beginning, I would like to thank you for participating in our module. And um, if uh, you can, please write in the chat, uh, what is your field of art? I uh, can see that some of you already are writing, music, dance, architecture. Um, I know it's uh, uh, not uh, easy to get to know each other um, like this online and in such a short time, but I would be very happy if you can share with us uh, what type of artist you are. And if you'd like to share some more, um, raise your hand and uh, you can shortly explain. Um, how about me? I'm a fine artist and I'm working in the field of illustration and uh, painting. I'm also a graphic designer and a publisher <laughs> because um, today's uh, uh, situation uh, is difficult and most of us, we have a few different types of jobs. So um, that's me. Uh, my colleague Diliana, she will introduce maybe herself uh, also, maybe later. Diliana, you're muted. Ah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, do you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. My name is Diliana. Uh, I'm colleague of SEFTA, and uh, I'm also a teacher and translator, and uh, we are uh, working uh, together and uh, presenting today uh, on Praha and our module. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, shortly about Rome Praha, the organization we are presenting today. Uh, it's organization based NGO based in uh, Prague, the capital city of the Czech Republic. Um, the main topics uh, they're working on our cultural and social work within the Roma community in Prague. Um, it's actually a very interesting organization because it's an umbrella organization under which are more than um, 15 different smaller NGOs and they're really cooperating in um, different fields. Uh, lately, they're working very uh, actively uh, with the refugees from Ukraine, uh, mainly from uh, Roma region. Um, okay, because uh, the time is running, I think we can uh, start with our first presentation. I will uh, share my screen. Um, if you can please tell me if you see my uh, presentation. Yes, if that we can. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for the feedback. Um, okay, our model is number three, and this is the first lesson. It's uh, named Why Go Digital? Um, I have to say in the beginning that it's um, our module is more uh, theoretical, but we will have some um, um, few places where uh, we are interactive. We'll try to be interactive so you can take part in uh, in uh, in the lessons. Um, if you like to ask me anything during the lesson, um, or you have if you have some comments, 
please write them in the chat or raise your hands. Uh, and because I uh, maybe I'm not able to see them, Yorgos uh, or Dilano, if I can ask you to to tell me if we have some uh, of course, some questions. Some of okay. course. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, why go digital? The digital age has brought an entirely new way of looking at uh, and experiencing the world around us. Uh, digital technology is transforming everything, and digital tools. <laughs> are bringing new ways of creation, promoting and selling art and artistic products as well. Um, we have some positives for the artists. Um, of course, uh, being digital, we can make contacts, we can easily join professional networks, we can meet new colleagues, new clients. Uh, we can be uh, simply in, keep step uh, uh, with the times. Um, we can be visible and reachable from and at any point of the world, which is actually amazing, which is uh, cool. Um, I can be on an island and I still can share my artwork and um, Hello, Helen from Sweden. She can uh, see my artwork, which is so Hello. cool. <laughs> yeah, um, we can be more independent and competitive on the labor market. Uh, we can reach new clients. Uh, also very important, we can back up and archive our art projects because, um, for example, People who are working uh, with materials, which art is material like painters and sculptures and so on, they know that um, the art is really um, getting uh, like uh, in big in big piles in their uh, studios and homes, and they have to storage it. And uh, if we have it digitalized, it's really easy and uh, handy. Um, yeah. Let's have a look at the other slide. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to, to make uh, some uh, one thing clear up that uh, we have actually digital and digitalized art. We have two different uh, things. Um, and today we're going to talk about digitalizing art, not about digital art. But let me say what is digital art. Most of us maybe know, but for those who are not sure, Digital, all types of art created directly digital or electronically in the computer or by using other devices. Yeah, uh, 3D films, graphic design, digital photography, video, multimedia, electronic music and many others. Uh, what is digitalized art? All types of traditional art, such as sculpture painting, performing art, theater, so on, which has been later on digitalized after the artist has been created the art piece. The di digitalization process is, for example, the process of scanning or photographing an original artwork, transferring the physical or analog art pieces to digital data. Um, in the digital era, when most artifacts and documents have been digitalized, works of art are no exception. The di digitalization of works of art is not to, repli to replicate the original work, but mainly to research, backup and promote uh, the, the art without having to affect or damage the original piece. OK, so uh, we have still the the original and by digitalization we can back up, we can promote it. Um, in fact, capturing a quality image of art work could be very complicated. Uh, most of you um, I think already know that because uh, trying somehow to, to, digital, to digitalize uh, art and um, they know they're not, uh, we know that it's not easy. That's why we have this, uh, this lesson to try to give you some uh, tips and ideas. 
but when uh, talking about art, in the beginning uh, I would make um, a little overview of the different type of art and uh, the way uh, to uh, digitalize them. We have visual art. In the visual art, it's one big group. My favorite one, of course, if I'm a visual artist. Uh, so we have ceramics, drawing, painting, photography, sculpt sculpting, um, textiles and fashion, folk and handicraft, architecture, conceptual art. Visual art, we normally shoot or photography, uh, photography uh, or we scan. We also have uh, 3D scanners and um, some other uh, devices uh, to digitalize uh, 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 visual art, but uh, very often we can use uh, also video recording. Then we have verbal art, that's another big group. Uh, here we have the literature, fiction, drama, poetry, and the oral art, like storytelling, oral folklore. Uh, here we record, or we can also use scanning and uh, OCR, optical character recognition technology. This is for scanning texts. Uh, those of you who uh, maybe are working with books know this uh, technology. Um, it's when we have a printed book and then we scan it. Uh, this technology recognize actually from the image, the scan image, the characters. So you have um, um, text characters after the scanning by using this OCR technology, which is really cool. Um, later on, uh, you can uh, work with the text, you can edit it, you can use it in uh, your um, work or research or so on. Um, publishing in digital formats. We have here also uh, who, whoever uh, published books knows that uh, today we we cannot talk uh, of publishing without uh, talking also of uh, publishing in digital formal, formats because many people are reading um, on their devices and uh, books are not only the hard copy we used to know from the old times. Yeah, and then another group performing arts. Here uh, we have the dance, music and opera, theater, music theater, puppetry, circus, magic and illusion, performance art. Again, we can record, we can live stream. This is also a relatively new tool, very um, uh, nice, very handy to use. Um, and then we can uh, shoot. We can use uh, documentary photography to chronicle events and actions. And the last group, uh, multidisciplinary arts, including conceptual art, filming and video, and various combination of arts and technology. Again, we can record, we can live stream them on different platforms. Uh, and we can shoot as documentary photography. Um, COVID-19 pandemic. This is my next slide. And um, what happened actually during the COVID-19 and the art? Um, we know that very many negatives are um, mm, uh, Pumping up when um, popping up when we talk about COVID, but we have also positive impacts. Um, what happened? A rapid acceleration of the digitalization of art and culture. Digitalization of art and culture started long time ago, but during COVID, what happened? It was accelerated. Everything went very fastly online. Uh, and digital, because actually this was the only way. Internet-based technologies became lifeline for artists and audience. Digital formats and techniques made art accessible. Public students, researchers and artists 
have access to great art from around the world easily from the computers in their home. Uh, alternatives for showcasing, promoting and sharing contemporary art appeared. Um, imaginative online solutions and innovations were made. Really, so many new and um, interesting tools appeared. Um, sp speed up the digitalization of the world of cultural treasures of art. Digitalization is also transforming the art market. The way how we sell or we get income from art is also changed. Of course, we have also negatives, and uh, I think most of us uh, know which the negative, the main negative is, is that the uh, virtual realm cannot replace the physical experience of going to art venue in person. Um, art being online, some solutions and innovations. Um, I put them in bubbles, uh, maybe there are many more of them, but uh, these are the ones I thought are, are, are very important. Um, art is accessible, um, showcasing, promoting and selling and sharing art content is, uh, is easier, it's new. Artists are upskilled for life. After the pandemic, we we know very uh, many new things um, from the digital world. From uh, um, if we, if we compare it from with the time before the pandemic, uh, digital audience development, building relations, gaining more customers, increasing customers' loyalty. You know, if they give us a like on our Insta uh, Facebook and Instagram, if they follow us, there we go. We already uh, built our um, audience. We communicate with them, they follow us, and um, that's uh, so much more easy now uh, with the digital tools. Uh, we have new tools for selling artwork. Uh, in, the new, in the next lessons, uh, my colleagues will talk about these tools. Uh, we have the streaming. This is also uh, exciting uh, and relatively new. We have virtual galleries and tours. We can actually enter the gallery uh, from our home, from our screen. Um, and we have new tools for uh, to run our business even on the internet tools for video conferences like this tool and uh, and more. Yeah, next one. <clears throat> I have some examples. Maybe uh, most of you know them, but uh, just uh, um, for the ones who doesn't know. I try to make uh, a wrap up of some good examples, best examples and sources of digitalized art. Uh, WikiArt is a traditional page. Uh, most of you, uh, everyone knows Wikipedia, but WikiArt maybe know. Uh, this is my one of my favorite actually pages online. Um, what is it? It's a user editable visual art encyclopedia. Huge thing, enormous. The whole art world is there. Um, we have 250,000 uh, 250, artworks, very big number, by 3,000 artists. Uh, it's uh, in eight languages available. Uh, most of the artworks displayed are historically significant. Yeah, uh, so you can find there the um, classical art, let's say, or the significant art from the past. 
Uh, interesting is that developers are based in Ukraine. Uh, Wikiart contains both public domain and copyright protected artworks. Um, works not in the public domain are presented in accordance with the fair use principle. Uh, maybe I'll stop uh, for a second here uh, and uh, explain what is a public domain um, artwork. Uh, in the next uh, lessons, we have a, a special a special model uh, which is um, uh, devoted to um, outer rights. But uh, when we talk about, uh, when we already said uh, public domain, I'll explain that um, uh, 70 years after the death of the author, any artwork is getting a public domain. That means that anyone can use it in the way he likes, he needs, and he can display it and um, <clears throat> on the internet share it. Uh, use it in, in his artwork, even like a collage or anything. So Wikipedia is mostly uh, images um, which are public domain. Uh, Google Art and Culture is an initi initiative uh, for visual art, museums and cultural sites, obviously from Google. Uh, it's um, friendly, easy to use, uh, used mainly from uh, young people, I can say. Um, I'm not going to open these sites uh, today, but uh, on each slide you can see I have the link and we can share the links also in the chat, Yorgos, if we can. So who is curious yes, can, uh, thank you, can have a look. At these sites, um, few facts about Google Arts and culture. Work with cultural institutions around the world. The mission is to uh, preserve and bring the world's art and culture online so it's accessible to anyone, anywhere. Which is also really uh, cool. It's for free, uh, it's very educational. Uh, the team helps cultural institutions and artists to digitize, to manage and to publish their collections online. So small museums, small groups of artists who are not able to do all this by themselves, not just to digitize, but also to manage their collections and to publish them, they can get help from Google and do this uh, through their application. Uh, the concept is attractive, user-friendly, interface available also on the uh, mobile phone. Um, another one uh, I would like to share with you, um, also one of my favorites, is Behance, Behance.net. Uh, it's part of Adobe. Uh, people working with uh, um, graphic and designs uh, know Adobe from Adobe Photoshop, so it's from the same company. Uh, it is a leading online platform to showcase contemporary art. On this uh, uh, site, we can actually see uh, contemporary artists and uh, make our um, portfolio, our projects, and share them with uh, the rest of the world. Uh, the good thing is uh, that it's for free, um, and it's really very professional, so um, have a look at that. Um, and talking about the sharing uh, art content, um, I will, um, in the, in the beginning, I wanted to invite you, but now I'll, I'll do it because I forgot in the beginning, to our PAL Connect platform. What we are doing uh, in our uh, PAL Connect project, we're uh, creating actually a platform uh, in which we will share profiles of different artists from Europe 
So um, in this profile, uh, each artist can have uh, his artwork, artwork displayed, uh, photo, motivation, uh, CV, and so on. So um, if you're an artist and you don't have your uh, digital presentation or you would like to have uh, more of them, please share it with us. Uh, get in contact with us and you can get um, a part of the Power Connect platform as well. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, this, uh, um, this page, I, I would, would like to um, show you the next page, is uh, Gutenberg and um, it contains ebooks. It's also an amazing uh, thing. Um, this project is a library of over 60,000 free ebooks. Uh, free EPUB and Kindle ebooks, um, each uh, can be downloaded or uh, we can read them online. We can find the world's great literature here with focus on older works uh, of the US uh, with copyrights uh, which has been expired. Um, how it's possible actually that we have so many uh, digital uh, e-books because of uh, volunteers who've been uh, digitalizing all these treasures of literatures and sharing them on Gutenberg. Uh, in uh, last year, the project Gutenberg celebrated the first ebook. This ebook was created, imagine, in the year 1971 uh, by the um, project Gutenberg's founder, Michael Hart. So I think it's uh, amazing, it's really uh, nice. So have a look at it if you like uh, books. Uh, LibriVox, uh, it's another another very good um, source. Uh, again, books, literature, but this time we're talking about audiobooks. It's another phenomenon, phenomenon um, lately. Um, Many people uh, would have different reasons uh, not to read, but uh, it's uh, to, to listen books, it's easy. So um, they listen. Uh, and on LibriVox, um, you can find again a lot, a lot of uh, books, 15,000 complete projects, uh, most in English. The project is, uh, is powered by volunteers, volunteers again, uh, which is uh, amazing. Spotify, uh, young generation uh, has it uh, in their pocket, I can say. Uh, if we don't have Spotify, we, we can't exist. Um, we have the digital music, the podcasts, and video service. Um, Playing music is free. Uh, this time, uh, I have to say here that this contains ads, advertisements, but there is also a paid version without advertisements. Um, the platform was launched in the 2008, and now we have 80 million tracks which can be listened on this page. It's really uh, easy to use it, and on uh, across a very high range of devices, including computers, phones, tablets, speakers, cars, TVs, everywhere you can listen it. So it's uh, really uh, user friendly. Yeah. And these are the sources and the links I've used. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, and at the end, I would like to invite you uh, to get a bit active and to 
share with us the answer of uh, this question. What are the positives of digital art? Yes, how, what we'll actually do, we'll try to make a word cloud. So please, uh, on your browser on, or your phone, it's up to you, uh, type uh, slido.com and when you type the page into the browser, uh, get in the beginning that you want to participate, enter the code, which is art, and just write the answers of our question. What are the positives of digital art? The good things of having digital digitalized art. Okay. You can give me please some feedback. If you understand. I'll jump to Slido. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So type slido.com, enter as a participant. The code is art. And please answer type the answer of our question what are the positives of digitized art mm -hmm. more i see one answer sears more maybe more to be visible and independent cool yeah very important give us independence Visibility, yes. Access. Wow, global recognition. I like this one. Easy to communicate. Never before been actually so easy to communicate, to get uh, into connection with uh, colleagues, with clients, with people all over the globe, to show them their art, to share it, mm -hmm. to being able to share with the world in a short time, short time. This is so important today when uh, most of the people uh, say that they don't have time because they have so many tasks. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll give one more minute to finish our uh, work club. Creativity flow we have also. Yeah, OK, thanks a lot for participating in this exercise. And uh, I think, because I see it's already 
quarter to five, we can continue with the other presentation. <clears throat> Just, I'll have a fast look to the chat if you have any questions. Not there. No questions? Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have some questions, feel free to ask. Or to raise hand, of course. To raise hand. Okay. No questions, Ilana? We can continue? No, no, you can continue, Sarta. Okay. We can continue with the lesson two. Uh, I'll try to be faster. I see we don't have that much time. Uh, it's a topic about photographing and scanning artwork. How to do it? To digitize visual art, we use, of course, scanning and photographing, also 3D scanning, video recording, 30, uh, 360 degrees photography, which is cool, and other technologies. Uh, scanning is best for small size artworks, which are not glossy or transparent, and has minimal of texture. It's relatively easy, it's also cheap, and if we possess a scanner, we can do it uh, at home. Photography, uh, photographing or shooting is more complicated process. It requires equipment and good lighting. It's very important, the light. After scanning or shooting the artwork, we need to edit, to adjust and to save the file into the correct format for, purpose, for the purpose of use. If we want to print it or to display it on the internet or whatever purpose we have. Um, I'll do an overview of the scanning. When we scan, we reproduce the image electronically. I think most of you uh, have been scanning, have, have uh, been scanning already and uh, know uh, the process. Uh, professional scanning services, of course, exist, but they're quite expensive. Um, scanning at home, it's basically free. But uh, to get good results, we have to get to use, uh, to, to know our scanner, to understand the different options he has. Um, the digital version of the artwork we can store in different uh, digital storage disks and then later edit it. Uh, scanning is best for small flat artwork. artwork. Maximum size, I can say, A4, A2. Um, here I have uh, some tips how to make the best of scanning. Uh, at least scan at 300 dpi. TIFF, use TIFF format. Uh, for editing, it's MIC, S M Y. K is better than RGB. Uh, also learn digitally to stitch your artwork if we're uh, using a small A4 scanner, but we have bigger um, artwork, we can uh, digitally stitch it in um, software like Adobe and so on, Photoshop. Uh, learn about all the options of your scanner. Uh, and maybe last of not, but not least, keep the scanner clean without dust and scratches. Remove the top of the scanner if your art is bigger, so you can fill it in. And if the artwork is really big, just uh, use photography. Um, shooting, photographing artwork. Uh, it's a process when you actually snap a physical artwork and reproduce it in electronic form. 
I think all of us uh, know this process uh, because we've um, been taking uh, pictures, I can say, all day long with our, our mobile phones. But um, uh, the result um, is not, uh, uh, can be uh, not really good. Um, professional photography services are of course expensive but if we really uh, want to get a good uh, good photography of uh, a big uh, painting it's best to to use a professional photographer uh, the digital version you can again store edit display on the internet so it's uh, good to have it and even if the original is destroyed or sold out sold you can always uh, reproduce um, from uh, your uh, digital copy. Uh, shooting is appropriate for big artworks, medium that uh, has a great deal of texture or it's stretched on canvas. Or also for sculptures, ceramics, 3D art pieces. And how to make the best of shooting? Yeah, this is my favorite slide because it's really complicated. Uh, looks like um, <clears throat> something that uh, only professionals can do, but I think that uh, it's not uh, actually uh, that difficult. And um, my advice is uh, that uh, you can try with uh, using the tips I'm giving you in this presentation. Uh, you need good equipment. You need two strong diffuse light sources. Uh, a decent, at least 12 uh, megapixel camera, best with lenses, a tripod. If you don't have it, use a table or stack some books and uh, put the camera on it so it's stable. And you need white background. If you don't have it, Use your wall, hang the picture on the wall or a big piece of paper, white paper. The lighting in the whole process is crucial. Your diffused, light, diff, diffused lights set um, on either side of the camera point to the artwork at 45 degrees. As I have uh, shown on the picture. Uh, what is diffused light? There should be some kind of softening filter between the light and the artwork to stop reflections. Because we have, if imagine we have these um, spotlights and um, we uh, light the picture with them, then we'll have reflections and uh, the picture is not good. But if we have uh, this filter in between the picture and the light, then um, and the lamp, then we have the diffuse light, and uh, and we don't have these um, uh, glitters and uh, different effects we don't need. If it's too complicated to prepare uh, these lights, you can just go outside and use the daylight on cloudy day because actually the clouds are doing the filters. If the uh, sun is uh, shining brightly, you uh, have um, the reflections, but if, if the day is cloudy but still uh, light, then it's perfect to to use it um, like a nature art studio and uh, take your pictures outside. Here I have some tips about the shooting. Important thing here is actually to adjust your camera and settings to get to know your camera because even if we have the best camera in the world without knowing how to use 
how to use it, we are not going to get a good picture. Um, take your time and uh, get to know your camera. Adjust the white balance settings on your camera. This is the process of removing Uh, sorry. Of removing unrealistic color casts. You know, if we're taking picture sometimes and we have all the white things in green, that's not good. We have to adjust. Shut down, the white may I interrupt you? Yeah? Yes. So sure. we don't see the presentation right the now. The presentation. Just... Okay. Yes. Something happened. Okay. I will try to put it again. Yes, thank you. Do you see it now? No, not yet. Yes? No. No, not yet. Okay. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, you can stop sharing and share the presentation again, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll try to share it again. <clears throat> okay, great. Now we see. Now you see, okay. <clears throat> yeah? Great. Yes, excellent. It? Thank you. Thank you so much for the feedback. Okay. We can continue. Adjust the white balance. Uh, another advice, take high resolution pictures. High resolution equal to high quality big files. Some people, they say, OK, I don't have place to store these big files, but it's good to take them because from big files, you can always make smaller later on, but from smaller, you can't make big ones. So um, take high, re high resolution pictures. Uh, set low ISO. It's another thing to, to learn. Uh, that's the camera sensitivity to light. Uh, very simple. It's uh, if we have low light, we use high ISO. And if you have bright light, we use low ISO for the best results. Uh, and then we go to the next step. We already uh, scanned or uh, uh, shoot the picture and now we have to edit to get the best out of it. On the first picture uh, above, you see uh, what I got after scanning one of my pictures and then uh, the image down is uh, um, what happened after the editing. We have different editing tools, uh, the best and well known is the Adobe Photoshop. It's a professional program and it's a, let's say, a Ferrari in, uh, if we compare it with the other uh, um, editing uh, softwares, but um, it's a uh, paint. So uh, if you prefer not to pay, uh, you don't use the Ferrari, but you, you, you can use the Skoda. <laughs> and it's for free. <laughs> and, <Okay. laughs> you can, and you can get the GIMP, the best of the open source editors. Some of them are online. You don't need to download on your uh, computer. You can do the everything online. Yeah. Uh, shooting and editing with your phone. Big question. Shall we do it? Is uh, better to use the lenses camera, or we can use it. We can use the camera in in our phone. Uh, it depends what type of phone actually you have, because the better quality phones have high resolution cameras with more than 12, 12 megapixels, um, which can compare with uh, with lenses with camera with lenses. So yes, use it. Um, 
but uh, some simple phones, of course, they have um, simple cameras and the result is not uh, is not really uh, brilliant. Uh, mobile devices, um, they also mobile phones, they have also different editing applications. So you snap the photo and then you can fastly edit it in your uh, in your phone. You know also this option, I, I think. Um, these apps are very often free uh, to, of charge, or uh, very cheap. And uh, the good thing is that we have the sharing option. So we snap, we edit, and immediately we can share it with the world, or with the world, or with um, we can. Um, <coughs> Uh, send it to some uh, Google Drive or other other um, place we store images online. Um, but editing on the desktop is also good because then we have the big size display and we have more features, better better control methods because we use the mouse and the trackpad and so on but it's also more expensive. Um, here I have a few slides. <clears throat> I call them like a pro because they're kind of, uh, you need to be a little bit of professional to know them, but they're important. So I will just um, um, fast present them to you. What is DPI? It sounds uh, really um, like some um, uh, unknown thing and very complicated uh, dots per inch, uh, but it refers to the number of printed dots contained within one inch of an image. Um, for the best picture quality, use the highest image size setting available when scanning or photographing. At a minimum, you should be scanning at 300 dpi's. When I was talking about getting to know your scanner, it's also this, that you have to set, uh, <clears throat> to do the settings in the beginning before start scanning. So when you have the window with the DPIs, choose 300 or even more. <clears throat> yeah. Um, some people uh, do, uh, this that they have a low low res image and they uh, use uh, editing software like Adobe Photoshop to increase the DPI's through the software, which is not good. Doesn't give good results. <clears throat> if you scan under 100 DPI's, uh, often appears pixelized the image, like I have uh, here on my image. Uh, <clears throat> You can see very, very easy. Uh, it's very easy to recognize the higher resolution image. It's not pixelized. It's clear. It's sharp. When digital, digitizing uh, art to use on the web, define the size at 72 dpi. Those we call low resolution images. We have also different formats and uh, different color models. Uh, when digitalizing a picture, save the image in TIFF um, because it can be, be used across different editing software and it's based on SMIC colors. JPEG is also good, but TIFF, I could say, is better for our, our purpose. What is SMIC and what is RGB? Both <coughs> are color models are models for mixing colors and you can see on the picture uh, how the colors are mixing. So if you can imagine RGB just from three colors, we can get the uh, million of colors and in SMIC we can get um, from four colors or all the colors. Um, I think here is a little bit uh, easier to understand. Uh, it's mix cyan, magenta, yellow, black. It's the color model for printed materials. So if you're 
uh, preparing your artwork for printing, if you're doing a poster or a book, or you want to digitize um, to, to make uh, art prints and then sell them on, <clears throat> uh, then you use this, this color model. The best file uh, formats for TMIC are PDFs. Uh, and also for vector formats, um, apps and Adobe Illustrator. The RGB model, it's the color model of digital images. It's the model of our screens. Because RGB are actually red, green and blue colors, or lights. Imagine that we have little dots in these colors and these little dots, the pixels, they are creating uh, the image. And mixing just three, three colors, we get again million, um, million colors. When to use RGB? When uh, we use it when we will display the image on any kind of screen. So for internet, for presentation on screens. And here we have the uh, formats for RGB images, JPEG, uh, PDF, PNG, and GIF. And uh, I'm getting to the end of my presentation. Uh, scanning and shooting artwork uh, work out if you're digitalizing your art work uh, correctly, you can uh, make uh, when when you scan it or uh, photography uh, or uh, shooting it, you can do a fast proof check if you're doing it well by answering the four questions. Uh, do the colors match the original artwork? If the colors are the same, then you're doing a good job. Is there a proper white balance? If the white in your picture and the white in your uh, digital picture are white, then you're doing a great job. Uh, is the image properly aligned and cropped? It's not crooked. If it's aligned and cropped, then it's very good. You're doing a great job. Uh, is the surface free of reflection and glitters? from um, improper light. This is the last point. And if you answer yes to all four questions, then I can say that you have a perfect digitized image. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll stop sharing. And if you have any questions, Please feel free to ask them. Do we have some questions? I guess no. Or some comments, maybe. It's always difficult before you have tried it for yourself. Yes. <laughs> cool. Okay, maybe we can, uh, Yorgos, go for a short break. What do you yeah, think? Sure. Yes, we can before moving on to the next lessons. Thank you. Thank you so much. Five so. minutes break. Yes, Thanks. perfect. So everyone just stay here in the middle and we'll resume in uh, five minutes. That will be 6 uh, 15. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, so that, Brianna, shall we continue? Hello? Hello, yes, we're all here. So Hello. Shall we, shall we continue? Yes, of course. Great. So, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yes, yes, so continue. I will. So we can start with uh, our next lesson. Could you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, super then. Uh, Seth, I just wanted to, to add that maybe uh, we can ask the participants to create a, their art pieces and then they we can digital, digitalize them, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can actually give the exercise now, so uh, they can they can do it. Um, I don't know, maybe in half an hour, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Because I just wanted to start uh, with the. Uh, I will rotate the lessons. Yeah, I will start uh, Yorgos with the sound recording, and then uh, I will continue with, with the video recording. Yeah, if it's not yeah, a problem. So we can yeah. provide them with the exercise next. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Great. So super. Uh, as I said, uh, my name is Diliana. Hello to everybody. Uh, I will introduce you uh, our uh, next lesson, lesson three from module three, and it's about uh, sound recording. What does it mean to uh, record? Uh, audio recording is the process of recording, yeah, of chaptering and storing sound sequences is by an electronic device called recorder. And uh, why do you think it's audio recording so important? Because it helps us to remember, yeah? It helps us to remember important life details. And then our recording uh, can be copied or shared, yeah? We can use them to make a film, yeah? And uh, we can transform them or improve them if we want. And of course, uh, uh, we um, we can improve also the original recording quality. That's why we make a recording. Yeah. Next, uh, I will provide you uh, a bit of uh, history of sound recording in dates, only to show you um, how how many uh, types of recording we had yeah, during the years. Um, last century, uh, 19th century was patented from, from by Thomas Edison, the phonograph, yeah. And uh, after that in 1895, uh, we had the gramophone. Uh, in 1920s, uh, Western Electronic Company uh, replaced the uh, old acoustic methods, yeah. And uh, in 1931, we had the uh, first LP record, yeah. And uh, in 1963, Philips introduces the compact audio tape. Then it came the CD, and uh, then it came the sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, then it came the MP3 player, and uh, Sefta already uh, spoke about the Spotify. Yeah, in 2006, the free streaming platform Spotify was founded, and uh, I also think that a lot of not only young people but also older one are using Spotify and uh, are listening to a lot of music and uh, uh, by Spotify, yeah? So maybe you will tell us what do you listen to after it? Why do you should 
why do you should to uh, to record an audio of uh, your artwork? First of all, of course, to be because you want to be heard, yeah. Uh, and as we spoke uh, in the uh, previous module, because we want to be independent as well. Uh, we want to have an auditory and we want to uh, find the right people to join to the right groups of people with, uh, with the same interests as us. Uh, in our case, to another uh, art people, yeah, with the same type of art. Uh, what kind of digital sound arts we have? We have uh, Sefta also spoke about it, I think, podcasts. What is podcast? It's a digital audio file made available on the internet for download, downloading to a computer or mobile device. Um, why, why the podcasting was started? Mostly because it's an independent way for individuals to get their message out, uh, to build a community of people with similar interests, yeah. So uh, we can uh, use podcasts, uh, again, Spotify, streaming is an uh, interesting method also of transmitting or receiving data, especially video and audio material. Next slide. Uh, Audio records in daily life, I think that uh, all of us are doing it at the very beginning, yeah, from the, uh, when we have a small child, we want to audio record uh, his uh, first words, for example. Um, and uh, another, um, after I will come, when we want to learn foreign language, uh, we grab the voice recorder and uh, we can polish up an everyday vocabulary. Uh, we can make our own audiobooks. Why not? Uh, use, we can use our voice uh, to raise stories for our children. Yeah. Uh, we can make our own piece of art, maybe for our husband. Why not to sing a song? or play a guitar, then use the voice recorder to make a record. Um, and if you don't like it, we can try again. Uh, we can uh, study, uh, we can uh, record our studies, yeah? Uh, because uh, it was found that uh, within 24 hours, learners forget an average of 70% of the new information. And within a week, forgetting claims an average of 90% of it. And uh, recording our lectures uh, maybe could help us to remember them. Yeah, we can make an interviews using a voice recorder. Uh, we can make our own podcasts. Why not? Uh, with uh, startup costs we can gain an audience, a new audience, yeah? Uh, if you have uh, any uh, questions, if you have any questions, please ask, raise your hand. If you can, if you have some comments or if you have some examples of uh, audio recording, also you can share with us some interesting one or not so interesting, uh, again, as I said, our children first words, uh, important thought you have, for example, yeah? Sometimes it's coming up in the night you want, uh, you can record it and then you have it, yeah? Uh, you can listen to your ideas. Um, you can start today if you want. Uh, it's a good guide, the beginner guide to studio setup, hosting and everything between. It could maybe help you if you want. Or you can start tomorrow as well. Uh, what is sound art? 
Sound art, it's something between visual art and experimental music, yeah? Sound art, it's a form of art that uses sound as a channel for creative expression. Sound art uh, developed from pre-existing disciplines such as spoken word, experimental music and surrealistic works. To date, the unique artist's medium is now a sound sculpture sound poetry and audio art yeah and here i will provide you uh, again with a bit of history of the sound art if it's interesting to you uh, at the very beginning uh, the experimental musical instruments were 27 experiment musical instruments and 1979 was an exhibition called Sound Art in New York City. And uh, uh, it, this exhibition actually helped to cement the style sound, sound art. After that, uh, we have also playing with silence. Uh, it was a composer, composer, American one, which uh, have, which has, who has uh, four minutes and four, 33 seconds of silence. <laughs> also interesting type of art. So, if you put music up against an image, it's directing you to feel a certain way. With sound, it's more about playing on our subconscious and your memories and your feeling from a different level. Um, for example, sound sculpture could be sculpture that produces any kind of tone yeah but could also not produce any sound the terms refers to just the opposite that it's a sound that creates a sculpture uh, or work of art so there are a lot of different types yeah of sound art and uh, the sound poetry is an art artistic form between literacy and musical composition in which the phonetic aspects of human speech are foregrounded instead of more conventional semantic and syntactic values. First, without words. Sound point poetry is intended primarily for performance. And now, something maybe more interesting how to audio record artworks uh, i think that everybody of you uh, can use uh, your phone of course uh, you can you can choose uh, different uh, apps there is asr dolby on easy voice recorder uh, some of them some of the uh, applications are for Android, some of them are for I, uh, iPhone, but uh, I think that they are easy to use, yeah? And uh, then you can upload, of course, your audio record and you can listen in, or you can share it with another people. Uh, how I have next slide, how to out your artwork, artwork with Easy Voice Recorder. I choose this application because I find it really good. Uh, it's a very easy app. Uh, you need to open it only to click to the record button to record. It also allows you to record as long as you like and adjust your recording quality. Uh, is available at the Google Play Store. You can search up at the Google Play Store and download it, then install it on your mobile phone for further use. If you want, there are some steps. Uh, and here, uh, what should you first? Uh, I have here 10 tips for better audio in digital video production. The first, of course, is the preparation. Uh, always we have to take a few minutes to avoid problems before they occur. With everything, it's like this. So uh, 
please make sure to have the right microphone for the job. Choose your shooting location care carefully to avoid problematic audio environments. Uh, when microphones are used outdoors, they require wind protection. Consider chaptering audio using a separate recorder. Use hardware, hardware compressors and limiters when taping in the studio. And post-production, how to fix the, our mistakes. Uh, consider using a dedicated audio software in addition to your video editing software. Uh, apply restoration, become, become more proficient at making smooth edits in your audio software. Become more familiar with AQ and Mixicops concepts and consider employing some secret weapons, some extra tools. They are always helping. And now, step by step, uh, Jorgos, if you want, you can share to the others. Go to Google Play Store, how, how to download it, how to install, how to make the audio record, yeah? And uh, how to share it with others. Here are the how-to for the audio recording. And maybe I will ask the participants uh, if they will have some time, maybe now or maybe after uh, after the second uh, presentation to take a short audio recording of their voice. They just can send, say two or three sentences. It's enough. And the last steps, of course, but not least, maybe the most important, are to share your audio record to others. Uh, you can choose the platform you use, if Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, I don't know. Uh, you can choose by your own, and then you will make your audio record. What kind of art you think we can rec what kind of art we can record audio record nobody <laughs> do you think that we can audio record visual arts Maybe not, yeah. Maybe we have some performing or literary arts, yeah. Okay, maybe participants are already tired. <laughs> uh, maybe I can add here, Diliana. Yes, uh, of course that we can uh, actually record uh, books, literature. I of already course. spoke about that, but it's so yes, cool. We can have exactly. the audio, audio books, the literature. Um, obviously, we can also record music, um, maybe theater, storytelling. Of and and uh, why yeah. not visual art if uh, we have uh, some, I don't know, um, some sound art. Some, some sound art, <laughs> as you said. Yeah, why not? Could be cool. I think so. I, I really like to listen ebooks, for example, as you mentioned, uh, libraries. Uh, it's really nice that we can listen to books, to some kind of arts. When was COVID, I think that we can, we had the possibilities to listen to a concert, to see a theater and so on, yeah? Or to uh, to go to the gallery, yeah? <laughs> Why not? To digital gallery. Okay, maybe uh, I should uh, continue with the next uh, presentation. Mm. Uh, so I... So, 
<laughs> it was my daughter, sorry. <laughs> okay. I Maybe if you, if you need a few minutes, uh, no, it's, okay. Out, it's okay. It's okay. Dobre, ciao. Mm -hmm. So, our next uh, lesson, Seth, do you tell me, yeah, because I will again uh, make the presentation, yeah, and I do not see if uh, there are some questions, but please yes, tell me if so, worry. yeah. That, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. Thank you, Argus. So, uh, our next lesson, it's uh, lesson four, and it's the name, it's how to video record artwork. We spoke now, uh, we spoke about uh, audio recording, and now uh, the next point, it's video recording. Video recording also, I think that most of you, you know, you know what is it? Yeah, it's a form of electronic media used to present visual images in motion together with sound. Yeah, uh, the video record could be distributed in many formats and allows, of course, editing and recording. Uh, what is TVR? It's digital video recorder. Um, an electronic device that records video in a digital format to disk drive, to USB flash drive, to CD memory card, could, could be hardware or software on computer or mobile. Again, why should you record a video? You have a piece of art and you want to share it to the others, for example, yeah? It's because the video, it's a really powerful way of promoting a product or service, or why not a piece of art? Uh, it's introducing, you want to introduce a new feature to a new audience. You want to help others to learn more about a particular subject, yeah? And you can make a video. Uh, you can make a video how to digitize your piece of art. And of course, it's very fast way of delivering information or of the message you have. Here, for example, I just have some concerts. I, I will, maybe I will not uh, switch them on now, but I can uh, share with you. Uh, they are in the presentation. Uh, they are really nice. Uh, uh, Roma interpreter. So then after our presentation or when you have time for it, you can listen to them if you want, of course. Uh, there are some odd reasons why to record a video for educational reasons, of course, as the audio record, the video record can help us, of course, to learn something. It could be work related. Uh, we can support somebody or something, yeah. And uh, last, not least, is the entertaining fact, a concert, a theater, and the poetry, as we mentioned, the art. Again, Sevda spoke about it, uh, but I think it's uh, really important that uh, we are making this recording, audio or video, because we want to be visible for the others, yeah? We want to be reachable. Uh, we want to be more independent. Uh, we can, you want to join the group of people, we want to join to professional networks. Uh, that's why we record our piece of art. Um, Sefta spoke about wiki, uh, wiki art, what is it? Spotify, the music online, the LibriVox online, online library. Just use it, YouTube, nothing to say. Everybody knows it, it behinds 
Sevda spoke about its social media platform, which main focus is to showcase and discover creative work. All of these platforms uh, could be used for a piece of art. Or to find a piece of art, yeah, why not? Here again, we had uh, sound art and we have also video art, as you see uh, here. Uh, video art, it's genre of art that uses films, video recordings and video projections as a creative or expressive medium. Yeah, uh, it's a it's an electronic media uh, which present an images in motion, which are video actually. Yeah, and here you can see some sources of video art with the presentations, with projections, and so on. Maybe you can make your own video art and share with us after, after it. And where do you think we can find uh, video art? Everywhere. We can find it, uh, find it on the street, on the square, in the metro station, yeah, because we are speaking about an installation. Video art could be installed, could be exhibited in the gallery. Why not as well, of course? And uh, but we can uh, we can view it and uh, record it in a different places. Yeah, here I, I just found some best video installation here I can. On YouTube, I don't know if you see just a type of yeah how it looks like. Maybe yes, all we do. Of, yeah, do do you see do you hear? I'm not sure. I don't hear anything, but I definitely have image. I can see the video. Yeah, we don't have the sound, but it doesn't matter. We see the You image. don't have the sound. Doesn't matter. It's interesting because there is sound. Anyway, I will try to share it to, to, uh, with you if you want. In the... Actually, Juliana, don't worry because I've already, you know, copy and pasted in the chat section the ah, links okay. to the videos. Okay, Argus, yeah, you're wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, Serta, are there are there some questions or so or some comments on it? No, no, I don't see any. No. Okay. Can I? Could I continue or? Yeah. I think yes. Okay, super. Then uh, again with the video art, what is it? It has three main elements. Pink image, as they spoke. The sound, <laughs> which you didn't hear, but it was there. And the time, they are the three most important elements of the video arts, of the video art. And now we are coming to the next step how to video record artworks. Uh, it would be some professional professional picture, how to do it, and then uh, we will uh, do our um, video as well, which doesn't mean it wouldn't be professional one, but <laughs> maybe we will not use the two cameras and <laughs> the perfect light, yeah? Uh, so the most videos follow the, the 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 here it's uh -huh, sorry the three steps below so we have the preparation step the pre-production is the preparation step yeah before shooting then we have the production and we have the editing one the post-production yeah so what is the preparation phase the stage of planning how can you best prepare to shoot your video? You can choose the right setup to choose the right place where to shoot your video, yeah? And then it came to the real shooting. And what we need? We need a camera. 
of course, without camera, we cannot make a video. We need uh, right light. We need uh, audio equipment uh, to best execute our vision. And it came the last step, the editing and sharing the video. Yeah? How to put all the final pieces together to present the best video, in our case of piece of art, to the right people. Yeah, that's the most important for us. So, a bit more of the preparation form, preparation phase, the preparation of the video. Uh, it's good to define what we want, how, what kind of video we want to make. And of course, uh, the, to know the audience for our videos. So for example, if there will be uh, art people or if they will be technical people, because it, uh, we will shoot different video, yeah? Uh, the key expectation and specifications for our product uh, the project, if there is a project, of course, uh, define the answer of the following questions. How many videos do I want to create if one or two, uh, if I want to split them together? How long have to be? How long will I make the video? Will I record? Uh, short overview. Why I am creating the video? What is my purpose, as I said? And what is the main message I want to share in my video? Yeah, or what I want to show? Uh, become, because sometimes it's uh, uh, very uh, difficult, very important not only to show your piece of art, but maybe you can uh, set, say you want to say some words or you want to share some message to the to the right audience yeah it could help it uh, with the promotion of uh, your piece of art um, the the video could be a story with a beginning with middle and end it's the best of course uh, you can find two free videos that chapter the style flow or format you have in mind with help everyone involved in the video creation process and believe me, it will do wonders for the final product you have this step, yeah? Then, here professional video again, the write the script, the get the right equipment for scripted videos. Um, here I wrote it's best to use two cameras, of course, uh, uh, one ahead, one in front, yeah, um, to have at least two different angles uh, when you shoot a video. The quality lighting setup, and that's it's consistent throughout the shoot. Um, of course, if you need some custom special backgrounds, I don't know, it depends on your video. Uh, and of course, please uh, <laughs> choose quiet location because as you saw, uh, your daughter can come and <laughs> help you with the uh, uh, shooting of a video. And then uh, you, sh you need to cover up these uh, little noises because otherwise they will occur while shooting and uh, <laughs> you cannot avoid it. Do not forget to forget to test, as we made test today as well. Make sure the video angles are where you want them to be. The audio is coming through loud and clear. There isn't any distracting eye tracking. The makeup looks good, and that there aren't any awkward of dis or distracting shadows in the background. Keep track of takes. Make sure to take notes on each take. This will help with the video editing process. If you like the beginning uh, of one take or the end, write down next to each take number. These notes will streamline the editing process and ensure that only the best parts are used in the final product. 
note any changes if they appear. And of course, deliver footage and notice to the editor if the editor is you, to you. Start with one video, get an example, even if it's only a raw cut or piece of the video before the editor completes the whole project. Market your content, create a blog post with the video, create previews of the topic, and post them to here, Instagram or to wherever you want. And of course, make sure that you share your product. Yeah, this is the professional view. And now, how to choose our application for our video today? We want to be user friendly, yeah? And uh, we don't want to install any new application because we have a lot. And we don't want to pay, yeah? We want free application. Let's think. And uh, I really tried with Filmora, which is really nice application, I have to say. Uh, but I couldn't upload my video for free. Otherwise, uh, if you want to pay, I really uh, recommend it. It has uh, plenty of features and effects that are easy to use. Uh, Today uh, we can try with Canva or we can try to video with our phones. Everybody of us, I believe, has a phone, yeah. Uh, and uh, we need, we don't need any equipment. We, are, we don't need to set up an equipment. We just need our smartphone, and of course we need some piece of art just. You can you can uh, choose whatever you want, of course. You can choose what you have. And Liliana, uh, yeah. Sorry, may I interrupt you because we have a question. Yeah, of course. Before we move on to the step by step you know, exercise. So mm -hmm. it's a question by Weasling Weasline. I hope don't mispronounce your name. And uh, it says so about the voice recorder, you mean if we really want to be professional about it, it will require more than one app to do it, or maybe you need the head of a better professional. I mean, a producer, if in my case, I want to be more serious about music. Uh, so about the so there you can see it as well. If we really yeah, want to be professional, it will require more than one application. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Of course, yeah. But today uh, we we are just uh, uh, figuring out how to make really easy easy recording, yeah, for our audience. Uh, so that's why I um, I choose uh, such such kind of applications, yeah. Yes, maybe I can add here also yeah. that uh, what we, as Ilana said, what we try to present today <clears throat> is um, a do-it-yourself um, ways to uh, to digitize art or free of use applications, online applications. We don't need to pay for them. Uh, we are sharing with you. Uh, why? Because it's very easy if um, we have the amount of money to go to the studio and to order professional audio recording. We all know it's or uh, photo. Uh, we all know it's it's possible, but um, not available for everyone. That's why of course, of, co of course, but maybe if uh, Wizline uh, needs, uh, then we can we can just uh, share with him or her, with her maybe, yeah, uh, how to make it uh, professional, yeah, Pref professionally. After our presentation, what do you think? 
it's uh, I don't know if I answer her question. Well, I guess you did, Sing Chi. Thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, we can join after it and spoke about and speak about because uh, today's seminar, I think, uh, has a different uh, reason. Yeah, to show the easiest application and how to make uh, some video or audio yeah and to post it uh, to upload it on facebook in our case on uh Ram praha or somewhere some somewhere else yeah maybe can i continue or yeah sure yeah okay so i think that we are running time but i have this uh, last steps with the video yeah so uh Yorgos, i will ask you after it to share to the to the participants yeah step by step how yeah so we'll, i will that, just yeah. paste the steps right now in the chat section okay so we are here Sorry, it came from the very beginning. So step by step, uh, I choose uh, I choose Canva, but uh, you can choose any application you know, and it's uh, uh, easy and friendly to use. Uh, you can make a video of uh, your piece of art, and then you can. Uh, click the video tab, you can add your video, uh, choose the right size of your video depending on the platform you need to upload. Uh, the typical size for video it's as you see here 9020 or 1080 pixels, uh, but they are different for Facebook, uh, different size for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube, etc. Uh, you can use uh, some kind of uh, features, from the gallery, uh, and you can upload your own video from your mobile phone or from your Google Drive, for example, if you use Google Drive. Uh, optionally, you can add another video or another page of your video, then you can merge them together. If you want, here it's yeah how to do it with the signs, and you can replace, cut, or adjust your video, uh, the sound of your video. Uh, you can use more functions under the more menu item. You can click the, and then you come. It's coming to the upload. Uh, you can click on the upload button to share your video or only send a link of your video to the others. And here it's coming our exercise. Yeah, we can try to make your video. Yeah, and upload it, upload it uh, or share it uh, with uh, the Facebook. I did post the link in the chat. Ilana? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can uh, share it uh, with uh, the messenger of uh, Rom Praha. Yeah, you can copy. We you can copy the link and uh, uh, just uh, mm, copy it uh, to paste it in the messenger, and then uh, the, after that we will post them on the Facebook. Of Rome Praha, yeah. It's clear what we have to do. Here we have a question. If yes. we don't have Facebook, uh, is there another option to do it? I would say yes. Uh, paste, paste it, post it on your channel, Instagram, whatever you use. Okay, okay. and just send us 
a link will be happy yeah, to and we can use this link and yes. if you want to share with us and uh, if you want to be uh, seen to be visible on the site from Praha just you have to share it with us I would like to share with you that uh, we did this exercise uh, here in Prague uh, when we had our local event in the Balconnect project. And uh, <clears throat> we actually got, I don't know, seven or eight really cool videos. Uh, they are already on this uh, Facebook page. And uh, as Diliana said, if you like to visualize uh, yourself and your piece of art, please uh, do the exercise and just uh, post a video of your artwork. We can maybe use it later on also on our Power Connect platform and uh, promote you as an <laughs> artist. Yes. Do you have any uh, additional questions or comments? You can just uh, use the platform you are used to it, yeah, and uh, which is the most easier for you. So maybe we can uh, give uh, to the participants like 10 minutes, yeah, to do their videos or I don't know, or we, we have to finish. I, how do you think, Jorgus? As for me, it's whatever you and the participants want, if they want okay. to be given, for example, 10 minutes in order to do it and perhaps if they have some questions at the same time to be here in order to place the locations, it's okay. Otherwise, of course, we can't finish. So it's up to you and of course the participants. You can force us questions, as we said, give your feedback and tell us if we want to give you some minutes in order to finish the exercise. I would give 10 minutes, as we said, to okay. finish the exercise. And during this time, please so feel up to uh, feel free to open up your microphones and share any comments, any ideas, um, anything you like to share with us. Or if you us. think it could be helpful for for, you. for the rest of the group, <laughs> yeah. maybe we have some uh, professionals here who are uh, uh, thank you, Helen. Able thank you able to give us some advice some ideas so feel free helen it's leaving so bye thank you There are some people, they do not have access to the chat. Yeah, some people are not having access to the chat. I see the message, I don't know why. Does it mean that they are not there or they...
if it's uh, also a question if the participant had a uh, piece of art in front of them, <laughs> which they can use. <laughs> I don't know. This exercise, of course, you can do uh, later on. Uh, because as Elena said, maybe you don't have your piece of art. But we are really curious to see because, what yeah, actually, yeah, what actually you're doing. Uh, so but, please share it with us. Because when we made it alive, not online, then uh, they just created a piece of art at the moment. It was really nice. Uh, so. You can, if you want, you have 10 minutes. <laughs> Also, please don't forget uh, before leaving to fill in the evaluation form to evaluate our workshop. Fill in the participant list who didn't because it's important for the project. Thank you. And I would also uh, like to uh, remind the participants to stay in the meeting before we are going to also take a few screenshots for the promotional purposes of the project before closing the meeting. Mm And Elena, I think you're still sharing your screen. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Sorry. I just want to send one more time the uh, Facebook from Praha if somebody needs it, yeah? Because they can share the message. I do not present anymore, yeah? Yeah, right. Do you have any problems or with the steps or do you make the, your own video record? I don't know, maybe we can, because I don't see uh, any comments. Mm, maybe neither. we can uh, slowly uh, close the meeting and um, I believe that we'll get uh, some feedback later on with the videos. <clears throat> and don't forget uh, to um, have a look at the Power Network platform, if you like. I can uh, maybe um, in the last minutes uh, Share it with you. It's powerconnect.eu. Don't worry, sir, Doc. No, I can do it as well. Right here. This is the link I just shared with you. The project. Uh, yes, yes. Website. <laughs> yes. So I guess we can proceed with the closing of the meeting. Okay. So great. Um, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Sofia Diliana for today's uh, very interesting session on the installation artwork.
I guess uh, I believe that we gained very important information about the subject matter. And uh, I would also like to thank all the participants for joining in uh, today. Um, also, please take a few moments, as I said before, to fill in the evaluation form. It's really important for the for the project partners and of course the attendance list if you haven't already. But if for any reason you can fill in fill them in right now, um, we will uh, share them with you via email also tomorrow. So sorry to worry about that. And just before closing, I would like to ask you if you could be so kind as to open your cameras in order to, you know, uh, take a screenshot of today's session. So just May open your cameras. Yes, Diliana? Uh, sorry. Of course. <laughs> I raised my hand like this. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Sorry, sorry but uh, I I had to I have a question because we maybe do not uh, we have some participants uh, as have the set which are not registered and uh, it means that we do not have the, their emails yeah their uh, email addresses and, and if they do not um, fill up the form then I don't know how we can yes well I can see from the meetings participant tomorrow if they have uh, joined the meeting with their emails mm -hmm. I can you know retract the email if exactly. otherwise yeah. mm -hmm. otherwise if I can retract the their emails uh, there because mm -hmm. they may have not uh, joined the meeting with their emails if uh, you have their emails uh, you can just send me uh, personally mailed to me with their emails in order to include them with uh, this correspondence with the attendance list. Mm -hmm. So I can remind you tomorrow to send me those participants email mm -hmm. and then I will uh, write the email with the attendance list in the evaluation form. Mm -hmm. If okay. that's okay with you. Okay. Thank you. So, Thank you, Yorgos. Of course, you're welcome. If um, all the participants who want could uh, just open their cameras. They aren't. Nobody. Nobody is opening their camera to to take a screenshot. Okay, I guess we can just. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Here is listening. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And more, Thank Barbara. You. Thank you. <laughs> it's Thank nice you. to see some faces. Nice. Yeah. It's yes. very difficult to speak to. <laughs> exactly. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Wislin. Uh, really, if you have uh, more questions, just contact me. If you want, I can share you my email. Yeah. Okay. Now, can you just try a pose in order to take the screenshot? Okay. I'm Okay, let me see if everything's okay. Okay, everything's nice. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for today's session. Thank you for participating. And I guess we can now uh, close the meeting officially. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. 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 Have a good night. Bye.